Good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here. Today, Dr. Lee Miller and I will give you a brief talk about the general information about the MU Plant Diagnostic Clinic and also how to submit a sample. So my name is Peng Tian. I'm the lab director of the MU Plant Diagnostic Clinic. In this talk, I will firstly give you a brief introduction about the general information and also our web page information for our lab. Then I will go through the lab services we are currently offer and also the services we do not provide at this moment. Later on, I will go through the step of how to submit a sample. And that includes submitting sample, fill up submission form, packing, shipping, and also how to make a payment. In the end of this talk, I would like to talk about the overview of the workflow, how it starts from the collecting sample, sent to the field specialists and arrived to my lab. That also includes my diagnosis as well as reporting part. So let's start with the general information. I am the lab director of the Plant Diagnostic Clinic and our lab offers services including the plant disease, turf grass disease identification and also identification of plants, weeds, insect and mite species. We're located in the Manfa Hall in Columbia, Missouri. Here is our email address, and this is our website. So I list our phone number here, and I'm a person who loves to talk. And if you have any question or you're interested in anything or you have a client has questions, feel free to give me a phone call. I would be more than happy to speak with you for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or for hours. So I'm available to, would like to have a conversation with you. So if you don't have the URL with the website, you can search Google, the MU Plant Diagnostic Clinic. And on the top of that, you can see our website over here and also the detailed information about location, the work hour, and also our building snapshot. So there's a parking space in front of the building. So you can park your car for dropping off your sample. So if you click the top link of our PDC website, here is a snapshot for the homepage of the PDC. And you can see that on the left hand, that's some features of our lab. And uh, here you can see the general information, how to submit a sample and the pesticide usage. We do added a sample highlight feature, which I include some disease with interest or with significance. I regularly publish post a small article on this. If you're interested, you can follow up with the sample highlights. For the personal, if you click it, you will see all the person who are helping this program. This is one person lab, but that does not mean that I will do all the work. We have a big resource for team. We have a different specialist, entomologist, forest pathologist, horticulture specialist, turf grass pathologist. And we work all together as a team so that we can help you to figure out the problem in a timely manner. If you click the sample submission, which is something I need to focus on today, it will direct you to the sample submission page. In this page, you can see that our traditional sample submission method was listed here. And you can see down in this page, you can see four PDF files of the different services we offer. And each PDF file are fillable. So you can click it, fill up all the information, download it, and send to me with the sample. Or you can download and write down all the information sent to me. We also have the guidelines of the sample submission, which was contributed by our previous diagnostication. Really informative. If you missed this talk, or you forgot something, you can go back to this file to look for the details. And in addition to this traditional way to submit a sample, fill up the submission form, we also have our new launched online submission system. We have one system for plant disease sample form, and we also have system for turf grass disease identification form. So in my part, I will go through navigate you to how to fill up the plant disease sample form. And Dr. Lee Miller, or later on, will give you a detailed information about how to submit turf sample, including commercial turf and golf course turf grass samples. So if you click this link, it will direct you to the sample submission form. So now everybody can see our website. 
And like I mentioned, if you click this one, you can see this is the page I showed you. Once I click this form, it will direct us to the sample submission. On the top of that, that's the payment method. You actually can customize the payments depends on quantity of the sample you're gonna submit to us. This also lists a price of $15 for in-state sample, $25 for out-state sample. So I will talk about this section in detail in the following slide. So I will skip here and go to the online submission form, which is down here. Again, there are a quick reminder that for turf grass sample, if you are a homeowner submitting sample from their own lawn, you should use this form. But other than that, if you have any commercial or golf courts sample, please use this link and Dr. Lee Miller will go through that with you. Down here, you can see all the other information. It's kind of like a, a rewind about what I mentioned before. There's a sample submission page and you can download all the forms still using the old form and the how to submit a payment. And for the sample submission guideline, you can always click here for the PDF file for the detailed instruction. If you have any photos, you can upload the photo in this online submission form or you can email to my clinic by emailing it to this email address. And this is also our mailing address. Now I will click this button to go to our online submission system. Uh, I will just firstly uh, go through this. Basically, this is the system like in the survey style. So in the first, you can see you will pick the origin of the sample, depends on the location. We have the instant sample and outside sample. Then the second option, it will ask if there's any additional time required, there will be additional fee. You can choose to notify you or just perform, go ahead and perform tests and I will charge you up to $20. Once you fill up all the submitters information, it will ask you about whether you're submitting for the clients. So if you go to that, it will ask you the information. We can pick MU extension, and it depends on the number, you can pick one or more than one. If you click more than one, it will give you a box to list to the samples, field ID, and also the cultivar. So we will skip that, we click one and next. And then they will ask what a service you need. We plan disease identification, click next. And you put a plants, we put a plants cultivar and the plant information and also the county and the state of the sample origin. Please, this is ask you the county, not a country. So basically I received some form that is USA. So that's not helpful. So you can pick the where the, uh, the sample taken, the state of sample uh, first notice, actually really important. Some tree disease seems to have been found over a year. So depends on how fast the pathogen progress, it can give us an indication how bad the disease affects the plant. So please put more information on the date and also the data sample taken, data sample to the lab. For the chemicals, this is very important. Please include all the chemical information over here. And even the herbicide sprayed by your neighbors, and the more, the better. For the size of plants affected, if you have the plant's disease problem that has the 100% affected, no matter what kind of host, they all affected. You may know that it's not associated with the biotic factor. It may be associated with the environmental or cultural issue. But if you have a 10 to 15% affected, it could be pathogen related. Once you click it, they will ask you the symptoms and you can pick root rot or dieback. So for the plant parts, you can select the parts, the roots, and then for the sample distribution, you can also select a scattered or the entire field. And later on, it will ask you for any additional comments. So here you can put anything that you want to add it. How old is the plant? with the pattern in the field and any chemical, any additional thing you want to put it here. We also have the feature of uploading photos. It can upload three photos to this. Again, the photo is very, very important for performing diagnosis. And if you have more than three photos, please send the photos to my email address, the plant clinic at missouri.edu. With all of that, if you click next, you're done. 
And your survey auto information will automatically send in my clinic email address. So I will receive all the information. I will look forward to the arrival of your sample, which means that I will know what I'm looking for even before you send your samples. So once you finish this page, you can go back to the, the previous page and submit their payments over here. And so we allow credit card and also PayPal methods. So now let's talk about the lab services. What service we provide from MU Plant Diagnostic Clinic? We offer services including insect identification, weed identification, and plant disease identification. For the insect identification, we have a group of entomologists. Uh, we were able to identify urban and indoor insects, as well as the field crop, ornamental, and tree pests. We also have a specialty that identifying the weed and plant samples. For the plant disease identification, we're able to identify abiotic factors related health problems, such as environmental stress and human activities. Here I have an interesting photo. This disease was called lawn mower blight. So you can tell this was definitely associated with a human activity. The damage was caused by the trimmer and the lawn mower. In addition to the abiotic factor related problems, we also identify biotic related problems such as fungal pathogen, umycid bacteria, and viral diseases. So for fungal pathogen, we take plant tissues. We also take fungal plates. For D sample, for sequencing, we have the services. We also do mushroom identification. For umycid disease, which also has another name called water mold, we take a root sample for root and crown diseases, downy mildew identification. And we are also in the middle of establishing reports to test the, the patient phytophthora inside the water and the soil tissues. So if you have any question, you have the request, give me a phone call. We can talk about in detail how to detect the patient phytophthora uh, in water and the soil. For bacterial disease, we take plant tissues. We also take bacterial plates if you want further identification, including the PCR and sequencing. And for virus disease, we take plant tissues. We use serological techniques such as ELISA kits to identify the viral pathogens. Can we test and diagnose the type of plant virus in the clinic? This is very good questions. I've been reviewing all the stock and all the protocol in the lab and also based on my experience. So far, we can test wheat virus. There are five viruses we can test. If you send a wheat sample, I think that's also the time for testing the soybean wheat mosaic virus. And we also have the other four viruses. I think wheat spindle streak mosaic virus, wheat streak mosaic virus, and also the other two viruses. One is for barley, the other for the cereal. So if you send a wheat sample, we're going to perform all the five viruses together. In addition to that, other viruses, including the TMV, tomato spot mosaic virus, and we also have the INSV. And so all the vegetable virus and some ornamental plants virus, we, we do have that. If you have any question or specific virus you want to test, give us a phone call. We can order a kit from Agdea ahead of time. And it's pretty quick. So the, it's ELISA-based. It can be finished in one day. If it's immunostrip, it can be finished in 15 minutes if we have the immunostrips. So feel free to give him a phone call. Definitely for weeds, we have already the set of the viral test. So that's the service we provide. Those are services in this slide that we do not provide currently at this moment. For nematode test, please refer to ICN Diagnostic Clinic and you can send some to them. If I find any nematode problem, I will help you to forward to them. For soil testing, Dr. Mandula, Nathan, they're doing great job. They're receiving samples through the year. And now after the soil sample, now they can take the plant tissue for a nutrition test. Please go to their website. We don't do the toxicity test. We don't test the toxin from the hay or from the mushroom. And we don't test herbicide residue. Again, for real-time PCR-related tests, since that will require really sensitive tests, we currently don't have the device, but we're thinking about establishing a system to work on that. Again, in the last, we don't test for bacteria identification through biolog tests. So if you want to 
very detailed identification of bacteria. We only have the techniques to test the bacteria in the molecular level. Now let's talk about how to submit a sample, which many of you guys are really interested in. Before submit a sample, one thing I want to bring up is please send me photos. Photos are really important and it can help us to get an idea of what is really going on in the fields. I have a couple of rules over here. First, the more the merrier. Please send more photos to us so that we have better understanding about the field condition. Stay focused. So I will need the photos with sharply focused. If you look at this photo, you don't know whether it's what's focused on the weeds on the background or just the lesion on the stem. Use proper lighting. If it's too dark, it's hard to differentiate the lesion and also plant tissue. Please take photos from several distance. This is a great example. You can see the photo was taken far away from the distance and close by and even closer to the stem and the twigs. So this serial image will give us a brief preliminary understanding about what's going on with the plants, what disease problem the plant is going through. In the last, please double check the photo before sending and double check with the quality and uh, please don't send your personal photos to me. And that's how to take photos before submitting sample. With that, once you're ready for submitting samples, first let's talk about insect samples. The first rule, same again with, uh, uh, with the previous one, the more the merrier. Please send as many as you can collect it. Second, please kill the insect before sending it to me. I don't want to receive some bad bugs or lice so I can in the lab and I bring back to home after work. Please kill the insects. You can kill them by putting them into the small beaker or container full of ethanol. And also you can put it into a freezer for overnight. They will be killed. Third, please preserve the insect in a good container. There's a lot of options over here and you can use them to preserve the insects. If you have insect together with the plants, please send the insect together with the plant so that I will know that some of the insect will be either happen to be there or they're the causal agent or the pathogenic pest for the plants. If you have some moth or butterfly, please keep them dry and wrap them gently. Here is a bad example of the insect submission. I don't want to smash bodies. One person sent me a couple of tips. He tips all the fabrics, the socks, and the beddings, and send me the tape. And from that, this is what I found on the microscope. It's a totally broken smash. It's really hard to identify at this moment. It could be some kind of wasp, but it's really hard to identify at this moment. Please keep the body intact before sending the sample. That's for the insect submission. If you have the weed or plant submission for identification, please contain all the plant parts in your shipments. We want all the part because the more plant tissue we have, the better for us to identify. This rule also apply to the plant tissue that are for the plant diagnosis. So why are we doing that? Because we need the leaf for foliar disease and roots for root problems. And if we have a lesion or damage on stem, please include the whole plants. Now let's go to the detail about how to submit plants. First, dead plant tells no tails. I need a dead insect, but I don't need dead plants. If you look at the photo, this is not helpful. And you may have some more problem like rotting or secondary because it totally soaked. This is an example of a good sample. Please include the soil and wrap them very well. Second, please choose a plant that show a range of symptoms from moderate to severe. This is a good example. You have the both kind of like a dead tissue, intermediate, and also healthy tissue. Dead tissue, healthy tissue are not helpful. All of this, you will receive a report called insufficient submission or dead sample or inadequate submission. Also, like this photo shows, the moderate range of the uh, symptoms, it's very helpful that this plant currently is suffering some kind of disease. Another rules including please dig the roots rather than pulling the plants and keep the soil on the roots so that we can have the root system line it out to see whether there's any root diseases. 
And please avoid sending detached leaf because they are easily dried out during the transportation. Please do not add water because a high level of humidity will attract more secondary infection or cephalopathic diseases. The last point, please pick the representative problem of a large plants. When we talk about larger plant, we talk about a bush, we talk about a tree. For those candies, they're actually a little difficult. If you have a leaf tissue, leaf spot, you can send a leaf with a branch with a twig. But if you have a branch dieback, I will need you to send me a piece of wood, like maybe about the 10 inches to 15 inches with the symptoms, like in the middle of the transition room with the disease and also hair tissue. And also, like I mentioned, please send me more photos of the tree before sending samples. Is there any special consideration that would need to be made for hemp samples going through the mail or any concerns there? That's a great question because we are in that mode. And I would say that at this point, they need to have their certificate and maybe make a photocopy of that to show that they're a certified hemp grower. But we can take those samples. Now, we need to make sure that it's hemp for CBD and not THC. We don't want anything with THC in it. But as long as they have kind of their state certification that they are a certified grower, I don't think that there's an issue on taking it. We had talked about that about a year and a half ago. And some of those discussions, you know, I don't think anything has changed where that's concerned. I know that Kentucky is doing it. I know that Kansas State is looking at those samples too. And I, I don't think that there's there's been an issue. And actually, I know that Kansas State is actually doing CBD percentage testing. So again, as long as it's for CBD, then I don't think it's an issue, but we definitely don't want anything with THC. If we do have hemp samples come in, we do have to destroy that sample. They won't be able to get it back. Now I would like to give the time to Dr. Lee Miller for the instruction of sample submission for turf grass samples. Thanks, Pong. We do need to delineate the turf grass samples. So the lawn samples that are coming from homeowners are going to go into Pong, and they should go through the normal submission process that he just showed you. However, when it comes to commercial turf grass samples, that includes lawn care operations, sports fields, including municipal sod farms and golf courses, shuttle all those to the turf grass disease identification form, which comes to me. So particularly with golf courses, you know, at, at some point, Pung will get trained in all of this, but there are some intricacies when it comes to diagnosing those turf grass samples that I need to have my hands on and, and my expertise in. So you can follow the form. You can also get through it through my turf grass pathology website at turfpath.missouri.edu. You'll see turf grass diagnostics. And basically the impetus for building this online system came from last year in the COVID pandemic where I still needed to be getting in these types of samples. So we actually built this first and used it as kind of a guinea pig or a trial process to really open it up for all of the plant diagnostic clinic and really get us into the 21st century. So again, it's clearly outlined on the submission page. It's outlined here. It's outlined again on the sample submission form for the plant diagnostic clinic. So there are a number of areas where it hopefully we'll be able to really call that out. And this is what you will go to. I and mean, this is what it will look like. So it's going to be from 25 to 100. So 25 is going to be for things like sports fields and commercial turf. And then $50 will be in-state golf and $100 will be out-of-state golf. Don't feel too bad for the golf folks, because I will tell you that their samples are so much harder than any other sample that we probably bring into the plant diagnostic clinic. That's probably casting with a pretty broad brush, but that's kind of been my experience with how difficult these samples are to work with. You know, we talked to, about how to take a plant sample and a lot of those same tenants apply for all of turf grass samples. So one thing we don't want, we don't want any of those samples sent in a plastic bag because those plastic bags will get humidity that gets in there. We will start some leaf wetness. And basically that's really starting the party for all of those pathogens, even the opportunistic ones. So I often say that I can get almost any sample in my hand, particularly turf grass, particularly the golf course guys. And I can find three or four pathogens, but it takes really putting the environment together along with their management practices 
to kind of put that whole Sherlock Holmes type of thing together. And, and Ponga will be doing the same for all the plant samples. If you ship it in a plastic bag, again, it gets that party started and really clouds our ability. We would rather do it in a controlled environment and incubate it in the lab rather than you start the incubation process through the mail system. And who knows how much degradation that plant tissue is going to have. So we talked about how, but also where to take the turf grass sample or any sample for that matter is just as important. So a lot of times in lawns, you're going to have larger patch or type of ring symptoms. And it's very critical that you take from the correct area. So like Pong was saying, the dead plants tell no tales. If you go to the middle of those patches, really all the activity is on the outside. So like mowing, I like to use the third rule where you have about a third healthy turf and two thirds symptomatic or declining turf. So in this case, this is a fairy ring on a golf putting green, but you want to be towards the outside of that margin. So you don't want to be sampling from the inside because really there is no pathogen that's there anymore. It's all progressed to that outer margin and will be much easier for us to grow out and to identify. And for more patchy type symptoms, this really illustrates that one third, two third rule. You want to be right on the outside of that margin to get us the best sample. A few addition for the sample submission. There are resources on our websites. On the back of the each submission form, it actually lists all the detailed submission guidelines. So you can always review that. And we also, like I mentioned before, we have an online resource of detailed guideline for collecting and submitting samples. You're more than welcome to download it or review that online anytime. So we have already talked about the sample submission. Let's talk about the packing and the shipping. So same rule with the plant sample, do not add water along with the sample. You can use a paper bag, but this mostly for the mushroom because the paper bag can keep the mushroom dry without uh, accumulate moisture for mushroom. So please place the entire plants in the plastic bag. You can add some dry paper towel or newspaper to protect the leaf from contact with the moisture of the plastic bags. I will say that it is critical that if you're going to put it in a plastic bag, that you wrap that in newspaper or in a dry paper towel. One of the best things to use also can be aluminum foil. I really like my, my samples in aluminum foil. It tends to keep them a little bit drier and it doesn't really collect that humidity. If you are going to put it into a plastic bag, though, I will tell you that wrapping those leaves in newspaper or a dry paper towel is going to be really key, particularly if they get stuck in the mail. So if you have a pot with soil, please wrap the pot very well because during the shipments, the soil can be splashed like this and they can cause more problems that were not even there when the sample was collected. With the plastic bag, are you saying the zippered bag should be closed or it should just be kind of stuffed in there to allow airflow? If it was uh, soil inside, it's better to wrap it up. I like the soil to be wrapped up in a plastic bag or any anything like that. But, you know, as much as possible, if those leaves can be exposed and not damaged, I, I think it's a better method than wrapping the whole kit and caboodle into a plastic bag. And like I said, letting that party get started before we can start it in a controlled environment. Please pack your wrapped sample tightly in a crush proof box. This is a very good intention. You put the big words on the back of the envelope, but this is what I'm gonna receive from the sample. It's kind of like we cannot work on this sample at this moment. Do not forget about the submission form. So before shipping out, as I mentioned, we have the online submission form. You can choose to do that and I will receive the email confirmation immediately. So you don't need to attach the physical form. If you have the form already filled, you can put into uh, the box I would recommend you to put a Ziploc bag and put the form into the Ziploc bag so that it will not cause some smear issue on your handwriting. For the shipments, please ship the package early in the week using the overnight delivery. I know it's a little bit pricey, but it's worth it because delays is equal to decay. And something I want to note is that 
Uh, looks like all the mail going into the university will first arrive into the mail processing center, and then they will distribute the mail to the different location on campus. So I received a phone call on Tuesday. They said they use overnight shipping on Monday, and I supposed to receive it on Tuesday, but I received that one day after the actual arrival date. So at this moment, I would recommend using UPS or FedEx instead of USPS if you want a quicker delivery, because I think they deliver specific to different locations. Yeah. So at last for the payment method, I already mentioned a little bit. So here is the price of the service fee and then you will be notified if you select check the box about additional tests. It's $10 per test that has including plating, culture plates, ELISA tests or PCR. We will charge you up to $20. Beyond that, that's all covered. So the maximum will be $35 per sample if there's additional test. Still, you can choose different payment methods. You can send me check or money order. Please don't send me cash through mail. And also you can use a credit card to make the payments using our online system. A little more to mention about the payment methods. We I normally send you an invoice together with a report if you didn't submit your payment method to remind you to pay the bill. And if you need, I can also send you the receipt once I receive your check and deposit. But that's for request only. I work in the plant diagnosis center for many years. Uh, something I noticed is insufficient submission that I already talked about. It's sometimes really frustrating because the sample is degraded or the sample was inadequate. I need the roots and the crown tissue, but I only receive the leaves. So I think a better communication between submitter and the clients will better serve the whole process. And also, if I receive the payment together with the sample and find out the sample needs to be forward to another lab, I will forward that to another lab and I will issue credits on your accounts. So if you have any future submission, uh, the fee should be covered. And that's for the credit issue. In the last, no pathogen found. It's definitely possible that you send a sample and after diagnosis, we rule out all the pathogen related problem. I issue a report with no pathogen found. And I, when I work in Florida, people are getting mad about the report because they looks like they really want their plant to be affected by certain disease, or they want their palm to die or to be cut down, whatever. They are really upset when they receive the sample with the report that no pathogen found. But honestly speaking, for no pathogen found, it's very possible. It depends. Sometimes the people send a sample right after spraying chemicals and everything was killed. Another reason is that some disease, they send the wrong samples and completely healthy sample, which not represented the disease. So at this scenario, I will still charge you because if you go to a clinic, uh, you did the, all the tests, the doctor said, you're fine, you look great and just take more rest. You still need to pay the service fee for all the no pattern found or insufficient submission will still charge you. And this is just something I want to mention. And Pong, I just wanted to echo your sentiments. You know, I often get a little bit of anger when there's no pathogen found and we can't tell them to do anything to help their plants other than to perhaps grow it better. And that's somewhere around 40 to 50% of the samples that I get in, depending on what kind of year it is, where I actually go back and say there's no pathogen found. There's no magic elixir that's going to come out of a spray boom that's going to help you. And sometimes it's too dead. It's the magic is over anyway. So if you can help us communicate to the clientele that you're working with when you get our reports back about that type of thing, that, that would help us out. Yeah, a little more to add at this point is that even this no pathogen found, it does not mean your plant has no problem. There is a lot of factor beyond that. So I would like to keep in touch with the client to follow up anything change or whether the symptom progress. So I would love to continue the communication for the submitter to continue monitor the progress of the disease. So that's for the payment method. I would like to show you the overview about the workflow. So basically this graph shows you the sample start with the client. The client will reach to extension specialist, field specialist, and either the field specialist or the client will fill up the form either by physical form or the online submission form. And extension specialist will inspect the sample to see whether it is adequate for sample submission. 
And once the sample is going through the delivery system, I will receive the sample, open up, perform the preliminary test, and I will make a phone call to both clients and specialists to see, to ask additional questions or to require more information or notify you about additional tests to be performed. And I believe this triangle is very important to make the whole system better because I believe the better communication among those three parties will make the receipts, diagnosis, and reporting very effective. Of course, once I receive sample, if I cannot make any conclusion, I will reach to our external experts. Like I mentioned, we have a big groups of specialists specialized in different area, and we will work together to help you. If this sample was related to the national regulatory pathogen, I will forward a sample to a regional center for further tests. So this basically is a workflow of how the sample submitted, received, and diagnosis, and also the reporting part. So if you forgot everything I just told you, <laughs> this is take home message. Diagnosis is only as good as sample provided. Please send me a proper sample and please send me digital images. I need the sample with fresh and good condition please send me the sample in a timely manner using a good deliver system. Again, diagnosis is only as good as the information provided. We have submission form, we have online system. Please fill those forms as detailed as possible. So the more, the better. And that saves a lot of time making phone call back and forth to verify additional information.